as we were sharing earlier, we know God has a power to heal. And we looked at a number of scriptures which demonstrated that it is God's will to heal. Maybe a lingering question is, okay, it's God's will to heal, but maybe he's not willing to heal me. Well, let's look a little more and let the Bible take away even those doubts. We're going to look at three verses in particular. Please, again, take down the scriptural references, and then when you have some time, read them. Let God speak directly to you. Let him take away any remaining doubts that healing is not for you. It is for you. Mark 1 verse 40. Now a leper came to Jesus, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, touched him and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Now, think about it. Leprosy, incurable. It's, it's a death sentence. This man comes to Jesus and says, if you are willing, you can heal me and cleanse me. The Bible records Jesus' answer. It says, I am willing. Now, the Bible could have just said Jesus healed him, but the words, I am willing, are specifically recorded in quotation marks so that we know Jesus spoke and it is written for our benefit. What's amazing is this account occurs not just in Mark, but also in Matthew and Luke. And in all three accounts, I am willing is recorded. God is speaking with a bullhorn, exclamation mark, bold, upright case. I am willing is what God is saying. If you remember, we looked at John 12, 49 earlier. Jesus said, I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. So the words that Jesus spoke are not just his own words, but they are from the Father. So when Jesus says, I am willing, these words come from the Father, gave it to Jesus, and Jesus said it, and it is repeated three times, so that we know God is willing. Matthew 8, verse 1. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came, knelt before him, and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man, and he said, I am willing. Be clean. Immediately, this man was cleansed of his leprosy. Luke 5, 3 has the same account. Mark 1, 40, Matthew 8, 1, Luke 5, 3. Please read. It's so encouraging. We know here God is willing. We know it's God's will. Let's look at this amazing account in Mark 5.25. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, she spoke to herself, and this is what she said, If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized the power had gone out of him. He turned around to the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said, There are many people crowding around you. What do you mean, who touched you? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then a woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, and told him the truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Here's a woman that snuck up on Jesus. She spoke to her own self and said, if I only touch him, I will be healed. Did she ask for permission? Did she say, God, if it's your will, heal me? No, she presumed that she would be healed. Jesus should have said, hey, 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 woman, I'm the Messiah. I'm the son of God. I want to heal, but ask me. You can't just take. I mean, what's going on here? The Father and I, we have sovereign will. We're God. I'm God in the flesh. I have sovereign will. How can you take, impose your will on me and take away my sovereign will? As if that can actually be done. It can't, but some people think it can be done. How can you just assume that I'm going to do this? You're pretty presumptuous, aren't you? Have you been obedient to all the commandments? Have you been very godly? Maybe Jesus could have said, you know, yeah, you'll get your healing, but not now. It's not my will to heal you now. Or it's not my will to heal you. You've got to learn some lessons first. How can you, woman, know it's God's will to heal you? But look at, at what Jesus said. It's completely the opposite. He said, daughter, your faith has healed you. It's almost this way. He's saying, you have the absolute right as a daughter to be healed. It's your right. Yes, take. Jesus turned around and looked for her. And he said, your faith has healed you. Exciting, isn't it? Do you know why Jesus called her daughter? There's another account. Let's look at it. Luke 13, 10. Very exciting. On the Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over, and she could not straighten up. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hand on her, and she immediately straightened up, and she praised God. Uh oh it was done on the Sabbath day. So the religious people were upset. Hey, you can't heal on the Sabbath, that's work. Never realizing it's God working, but we resting. 
We're not working on a Sabbath. We're receiving healing because God is working. Jesus answered these religious people and said, You hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from a stall and lead it out to give it water? Then Jesus said this, Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath? From what bound her? Please listen to what Jesus said. Should not or ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, be set free? You see, he's saying it's her right. She should be set free. It's her right. There's no question of whether it's the will or not the will. She has the right as a daughter of Abraham to be set free. This is her right. It ties back to this woman with the issue of blood. That's why Jesus called him her daughter. She's a daughter of Abraham. That's what he meant. Daughter of Abraham has a right to be healed. What does a daughter of Abraham or son of Abraham mean? It's in Galatians 3.5. It says, Therefore, God who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? What does hearing of faith mean? Verse 6, Galatians 3, verse 6. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So this is the, the explanation of what it means to hear faith. This is how Abraham became the father of faith and how sons and daughters of Abraham have the right to be healed because Jesus would say, ought not you, a daughter of Abraham, be healed? Ought not you, a son of Abraham, be healed? That's what Jesus says. Verse 9, so then all those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Maybe we think, oh, Abraham, oh, goodness, tremendous, tremendous, patriarch. I'm not like him. But let's see what exactly he believed because people have many interpretations. But Galatians 3, 5, when he says, Abraham believed God, God is quoting from Genesis 15. Abraham, like any person, wanted to have a son. His wife and he could not bear children and they were old. Abraham was distressed and he wanted a son. And he asked God, God, I have no heir. And God says, you'll have a son. And Abraham doubting, but you know, it, I'm old. My wife's old. God said, come, come on. Look at the heaven, stars in the heaven. Can you count? So shall your descendants be. And then Abraham said, he believed. I believe. And God records that down and said, Abraham believed God and this was credited to him as righteousness. So Abraham was declared righteous, Genesis chapter 15, when he believed that God would give him a son. Was Abraham sinless? Did he make mistakes? Did he have doubt? Yes. Yes, he did. But he believed, notwithstanding his own failures, his own weaknesses, that God's goodness would overwhelm his inabilities and give him the desire of his heart, give his wife the desire of her heart. That trust and believing in God's goodness is what God calls faith. That's not different than this woman with the issue of blood. What did she do? If I just touch Jesus' cloak, I'll be healed. She's just believing in the goodness of God, not her own sinfulness or, or weaknesses. She just believed in God's goodness. Jesus called her daughter. Woman in a synagogue, crippled for 18 years, sick, wanting to hear a word of, of encouragement, a healing. Jesus sees her and says, daughter, ought not this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for so many years, be healed. As we read these scriptures, God is saying the same thing to us. Ought not you or me or this person, that person, with whatever ailment we are faced with, a daughter or son of Abraham, because you believe in my goodness, God's goodness, ought not you be healed? Is this not your privilege, your right? Oftentimes we think we have to pray and pray and beg God somehow to hear us and turn his heart and step in and intervene. God is already stepping in. God already stepped in, actually. God already paid for your healing and my healing, paid for it on the cross through Jesus. It's already been done. Our part is to believe, just believe. When we believe in the goodness of God, God calls that faith. God calls that righteousness of faith. And all those who are of faith are children of Abraham, sons of God, daughters of God. It's so amazing. God is so good. He gives us what we do not deserve because his son, Jesus, took what he did not deserve. And that's the answer. We look away from our own predicaments, our inabilities, our disqualification, and look to the one, the one from sent from heaven, who is our qualification. So I think I'll end here. really hope you'll take the time to read the scripture, scriptures and just let God speak directly to you because it's God's word. Thank you and see you later.